don't know too much about the man, Stephen King, even when he had an accident that nearly ended his life. In something eerily familiar from his books, he was hit by a truck as he walked along an empty road. NBC's Katie Couric profiles an author who survived misery. You did it! You did it! You murdered my misery! For two decades, Stephen King has frightened millions of readers and moviegoers. Take my advice. But now he's finding himself in the center of a real-life horror story, one that could have been lifted straight from his novels. It just happened. Bang, there it was, and uh, I woke up with my lap on sideways. It's a story that has cast into doubt the future career of one of America's most prolific and popular writers. Maybe there'll be another book, maybe there won't. Today I'm more concerned with walking again with no crutches. It was almost five months ago that this story began, as King was taking his daily four-mile walk near his remote summer home in Lovell, Maine. Route 5, less than a mile from King's driveway. The rural two-lane highway twists, turns, and slopes through this town, population 1,200. King remembers cresting this hill that sunny June afternoon, but remembers very little of what happened next. When I was walking up, the side of the road on the shoulder and something came over the top very fast and I thought to myself it's a school bus and it's going to hit me. It wasn't a school bus but this light blue Dodge Caravan. Police say the van was moving about 45 miles an hour when Brian Smith, the 41 year old driver, was distracted by his Rottweiler. The guy was on the shoulder. He wasn't on the road at all. If I'd been walking in the road I wouldn't have been touched. I got one look, and the next thing that I knew, I was looking at the back end of the, uh, of the van. As he walked along the shoulder facing traffic, the van struck King on his right side, sending him flying into the windshield, up in the air, and over the roof. King was conscious, but barely, lying in a ditch by the side of the road. His hip dislocated, part of his scalp torn away, a lung about to collapse. Several ribs were broken and his right leg, knee, and hip were completely shattered. As King was rushed to the hospital, police tracked down his wife of 28 years. Tabitha, this must have been obviously horrific for you to get this news. Uh, the phone call I got was the meet the policeman phone call. Um, <laughs> and I did not understand for some time the extent of his injuries. King now owns the van that hit him. He says he bought it to keep it out of the hands of macabre souvenir hunters. As for the driver, Brian Smith has been indicted by a grand jury on charges of aggravated assault and driving to endanger. Are you angry at him? I don't think that would serve me any purpose. It's an energy drain and what happened is what happened. Whether he's a good guy or whether he's a bad guy, he's obviously a very bad driver. Because of the accident, Brian Smith's license has been suspended again. He has pled not guilty and is currently waiting for a court date. For now, the future for both men remains uncertain. After three weeks in the hospital, eight operations and nearly five months of physical therapy he describes as torture, doctors still don't know if King will ever regain full use of his right leg, the one which is now held together by pins. Tell us about that, that contraption, yeah. that fashion statement you're making here. No, actually, I'll let my wife tell you about this. There's two pieces. There's the appliance that holds the pins um, that, that hold the bones together. When you get... Phone Home Shopping Network right. now. Right. Operators are standing by. <laughs> Use Tootie. <laughs> you're relying a lot on humor to get you through this. Uh, humor and drugs, the two right. things and, together. And yeah. <laughs> a lot of bitching off yeah, camera. Yeah, big time. Thank Gotta have Fango. Humor and therapy may eventually help restore King's ability to walk. What's less clear are the long-term effects on his livelihood. After the accident, I was totally incapable of writing. Speedy recovery. Oh Thanks God. again. By late July, King decided he needed to make an attempt to return to his craft. It was much harder than he anticipated. At first... It was as if I'd never done this in my life. It was like starting over again from square one. I mean, from like being 12, 13 years old, there was this, this one awful minute when I sat there and I thought, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this anymore. 
Was it a memory thing at all? Uh, I don't know I whether know. it was a confidence thing or whether it was a memory thing or what it was. It took about four days to actually look at the sentences and see that they still made sense. But I thought if I didn't go back to work, maybe I wouldn't go back to work. Do you think you'll ever incorporate this experience in a book? Sooner or later, everything goes in. There is heavy irony in the accident becoming a future element of King's work. Some aspects already bear a striking familiarity to some of his earlier books. The demonic car in Christine. The crippled author in Misery. He almost died. But there was one case of life imitating his art that he found particularly troubling. I know that your book, Rage, is a book that you would like to take out of print. Rage is, is a book uh, that deals with a kid uh, who brings a gun to school, uh, shoots a teacher, and holds a class hostage. Shots fired for Tropis Lake Road at the high school. i got two subjects down inside the lobby. It was a scenario that existed only in Stephen King's mind, a fantasy. Then came the rash of school shootings that have plagued many communities in the 90s. King's solution was to ask that the book no longer be published. I took a look at Rage and said to myself, if this book is acting as any sort of an accelerant, if it's having any effect on any of these kids at all, I don't want anything to do with it, regardless of what may be the moral and legal rights and wrongs. And even talking about it makes me nervous. King writes about an equally angry time in his new book, Hearts in Atlantis. Written before the accident, it focuses on the tumultuous years during the Vietnam War. You were somewhat trepidatious about writing about that era for a long time. I mean, that is your generation, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. We called each other, man. man. Yeah, man. When you look back on it, everything about the 60s seems kind of plastic, fantastic, and kind of uh, fake. Because of Hearts in Atlantis, Stephen King's name is once again on the bestseller list. But now, five months after the accident, while King is dabbling in nonfiction, there is no sign of a new novel in the works. I have every confidence that, that he'll uh, continue to write. Either that or he'll have to go get a job, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to threaten people and tease them with things like, sorry, I'm not going to do it anymore. Beg me and make me, you know, make me feel <laughs> more appreciated. <laughs> with me, beat me, make me write bad checks. Your wife has a lot of confidence. Mm. In, in more than writing. I do. I was going to say, do you? No, not a lot. Will another Stephen King novel appear in bookstores again? That remains a mystery. For now, the master of misery and death is just happy to be alive. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm going to be able to write, what I'm going to be able to write, but that's not the most important thing anyway. I think that to still be able to walk and talk and occasionally crawl in my belly like a reptile has... Uh, made me intensely grateful. And those leg braces have now been removed, but doctors say Stephen King won't know for a year if he will ever walk unassisted again. He wrote a short novel recently for sale only on the internet. It sold 400,000 copies in its first 24 hours at $4 a time. Sunday Sunrise continues in a moment after a little tantrum.